Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, we are live here today from Waltham Abbey in our little uh, studio we've made over the last year or so. Um, so I hope you enjoy this webinar. Today's webinar is called Audio for Higher Education in a Hybrid World. My name is Tom Coleman. I'm going to be hosting this webinar today alongside my colleague, uh, Chris, who's going to be doing the bulk of the presentational work. Thanks, Tom. I am Chris Morley, the Market Development Manager for Shore UK. As Tom said, I'm going to be taking you through the presentation today. So let's have a look at today's agenda. We've got the technology timeline. We're going to take you through hybrid learning. We're going to look at the audio system and we're going to look at some sure solutions. And of course, at the end, we're going to have some time for some questions. That's right. So we, of course, in GoToWebinar, I think most of us have done at least 15 webinars in the last week. <laughs> so um, if you'd like to pop your questions and comments in the little question box, then we'll get around to those um, at, at the end of the webinar. All right. So let's take a look at the technology timeline. Around the year um, 2000, um, we have very limited technology back in, uh, back in universities and uh, it was uh, arguably not very good either. Um, well, I mean, it was kind of suitable for its time, what, what was required yeah. in yes, those times. That's right. Uh, with very sort of uh, very, like I say, limited te technology with overhead projectors and maybe stereo or hi fi systems in the room. Um, then we fast forward a little bit. <clears throat> And we go to projectors and PowerPoint where, you know, we're starting to project, uh, present electronically um, from uh, laptops where we can prepare content away from, you know, away from the overhead projector. We're not writing on a piece of acetate anymore on the fly. We can prepare in, well in advance. Would you like? No, thanks, Mr. Clippy. You are history. Um, <laughs> so then we move to like lecture and uh, less, lecture capture. Um, universities saw like an increase in wireless uh, and in, in their auditorium spaces. Um, they still had wired microphones on podiums, but this is presenting from a very static position. It wasn't great for um, walking across stage, writing on um, big chalkboards or anything like that. So a lecture capture would literally capture what's happening or record what's happening in that one single single lecture. That's right. Yeah, it just be captured so it can be reviewed for training or it can be reviewed for um, sort of, uh, you know, um, presentation um, reflection. Cool. OK, then we fast forward a little bit and we go to lecture broadcast um, or oh, someone that's got their mic unmuted, I believe. So how, how would a lecture broadcast differ to lecture capture? Um, lecture broadcast is uh, one to many. Um, so there'll be one person presenting and then there'll be, um, there'll be lots of people listening in remote locations, but they'll just be listening. Oh, but it's live as well as it's supposed to be recorded. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. Um, then we come to 2020 and I'm sure it has been a year for everybody. Um, but we're seeing a huge increase in wireless and wired microphone arrays and DSP technology used in those spaces to assist in this new hybrid learning environment. So what, what, what would hybrid learning be? Hybrid learning is uh, it's, it's, it's a way that teachers and students can communicate um, whether whatever location where they are, but it's multi-directional conversation rather than just a broadcast where a lecturer is streaming to many without answering questions. Well, so you've got so the main teaching room to lots of home or, or local areas as well as bridging multiple large rooms together. That's right, yeah. So, cool, cool. So, so basically like, we can see how that timeline's worked, but over, well, basically like in that kind of summer of 2020, many, many universities saw a massive need to upgrade all of their kit in order to make sure they can participate in hybrid learning at a pretty wide scale. Yeah, that's right. So universities, um, they, they, what would normally take a, a 12 to 18 month period, it was done in the summer break, essentially. Um, it was, you know, a lot of people all hands to the deck getting this, getting ready for this new hybrid way of learning so that students could get the education when they come back from summer break and they can study from wherever, whether it be at home, in halls or um, wherever they could find a spot during this crisis. Gotcha. Got you, got you. So within, within that, that area, so why is the audio of this system so important? Well, I'm going to turn my microphone off now um, and you're now only going to hear me through Tom's microphone. Um, and if I tap here, you won't be able to hear anything. So while you can see and hear us, I've turned my microphone back on now. While you can see and hear us, um, the, the audio part of the presentation is arguably the most important for communication. Um, without that, 
it's just a presentation on a screen. Um, over, if you've got poor audio, it's going to cause listener fatigue. And listener fatigue over prolonged periods of time can cause pain and irritation, and you, you just generally switch off from the presentation. So like in that small period when you turned your mic off, all our listeners today and watchers today rather would still have been able to hear you. And it's like, oh, I can still hear Chris, but it's significantly harder for my brain to deduce what's going on right now. And that that's okay for a short period of time because you know what things happen. But when you're uh, repeatedly listening to something like a poor acoustic or where there's insufficient microphones for the room, it's like I genuinely can't make out what's going on in this room, and that's really hard for students. Yeah, and over time, like I say, that they'll they'll switch off, um, and it, they'll just become less interested and less engaged in the material or the content that's being shown. Cool. All right, so we've uh, we've had a bit of a discussion about all why audio is so important. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the devices that make up an audio system. So the microphone is a transducer. A transducer converts one energy form into another. In this is in this instance, a microphone turns acoustical energy into electrical energy. The microphone is typically connected to the digital digital signal processor. Um, a digital signal processor or DSP might provide multiple functions like mixing, equalization, compression, and feedback suppression. This device is used to prevent audio problems. The problem that we have is that the signal from the DSP isn't powerful enough to drive a loudspeaker. The amplifier increases the signal level appropriately to drive output devices such as speakers or headphones. The output device is a means of delivering audio to our ears such as loudspeakers or headphones. Like the microphone, the, trans, the loudspeaker is a transducer. It converts the electrical energy from the amplifier back to acoustic energy that we can hear. So we've had a look at the devices that make up an audio system. Here are our devices. So in the microphone range, we have the MXA910 C linear array. We have the MXA710 linear array. We have the MXA310 table array. And for DSP options, we have the IMX Room software DSP, we have Intellimix P300, and the smaller brother to the Intellimix P300 is the Annie USB matrix. Around these devices, we can have the MXA mute button, it does exactly what it says on the tin, and the MXN 5C network PoE loudspeaker to complete the audio chain. The collective term for these devices is the short audio ecosystem. The, the, the flexible audio architecture just makes it easy to make it scale, make any audio system scalable um, from the smallest classrooms all the way up to lecture theatres and auditorium spaces so that students and teachers get the same high quality AV experience um, that they get on campus regardless of location. So we've seen um, we've, let's have a, we've seen what we need and uh, we've seen the, what devices are in the ecosystem. So let's have a look at some common room types within a university. Um, these aren't drawn to scale in any way. These are just for um, demonstration purposes. Sounds good. So this is a small room, um, and from what you can see, you see the two MXA 710s in the ceiling. But these can be mounted on a wall, vertically or horizontally. Um, and they can also be mounted in a table. These are going back to the switch where the P300 digital process, digital signal processor is connected to. And from that switch, also the MXM 5C PoE loudspeaker is also connected. So in, in this room, what function is that P300 delivering to that room? What's, what's it collating? Where's it sending it's, audio? It's capturing the audio from the microphones. Yeah. Um, it's sending it down to the far end, to the far end participants. It's bringing the far end participants back into the DSP and then bringing it out into the uh, network loudspeakers. I've got to say the P300 in this example is chiefly the, what you consider the, the brains of the system. Very much so, yeah. Um, and what you can see there is the uh, system on server. This uh, system on server is for uh, remote asset management and you can monitor all of your network short audio devices. So much like the small, much like the small classroom, um, the medium classroom is pretty much the same, but we see a few more devices in there. That's because the teaching and uh, student area is a lot bigger, and there's going to be a more need for um, reinforcement of sound in the room and uh, pickup 
of uh, audio for questions, multi-directional conversation. So it simply extends the coverage area of the microphones and the loudspeakers? Like we've got a larger area, we're gonna need more microphones and speakers to cover this area. Yeah, exactly. And again, the system on server um, is connected again to the switch to monitor these devices. And that'll be the same server? It will be, yeah. Yeah, it's not an individual server for each room. It's the same server on campus. Now we have a look at a larger room. You can see five MXA 910s in this room. These are going back to the switch where the P300 is also connected just like the rooms before. In this room, it is a large, large space. So we're, we're, we're connecting a lot more speakers. There's 12 um, PoE loudspeakers in this room. And again, the system on server connected in very much the same way. In this room in particular, you could add a, a ULXD wireless system, which is what we're actually using today, Tom. That's true, that's true. So what, what, what might the, the ULXD wireless system offer those guys in terms of flexibility for that kind of space? Um, it's, for lecture and um, lesson capture, it's just gonna give that crystal clear audio, um, and then it's just gonna make it easier for everybody listening back. Cool. So while uh, the MXN910s deliver good quality audio, sometimes if like, they, they, they can pick up the overall coverage for the whole room, but sometimes if you've got, I'm definitely addressing someone for the whole day, I'm going to talk into a close mic to get a, a better quality sound. Like you said, when you turned your mic off, mm -hmm. it was like, yep, I can deal with that for a bit, um, but you're sometimes having that direct sound for a longer period of time is just preferable. Correct, yeah. Sure. So we've seen the technology that might go into a certain size room based on its size. Um, but when a room's so large, students and teachers can't hear each other over distance, and this causes a problem. Again, we're going back down to the root of listener fatigue, where students will be less engaged and switch off over time. Um, for that, uh, we have a very clever system called Voice Lift. Desk. Okay, thank you for joining us in our short training room in our uh, London office in central London. Um, as we all know, the best way to reproduce sound is having a microphone right in front of your mouth. But in this case, it's not. Um, we're not using this microphone. In fact, it is not even turned on. Um, so <clears throat> as you spoke about the voice lift before, um, as you can see from the UCI, as I'm walking across the room, you are seeing the blue dots, which are the lobes of the MXA 910s, and the green dots, which are the speaker zones. As I'm walking across the room, you can see the blue dot is now active in this corner and the speaker zones are being reinforced in the back part of the room. Andrew, yes. how do you hear me in the back? I can hear you quite well and fine, thank you. And as we look on the graphic now, as I start to talk, the MXA 910 at the back of the room is currently picking me up in that blue zone and reinforcing me into the front of the room, which means hopefully you can hear me nice and clearly as well. So, Andrew, if we were in a dynamic um, classroom environment and you were walking around the class like I was. Yeah. How would this work? Um, it's completely flexible and completely bi-directional so you will see that as I move across the back row of speak, um, chairs here the relevant lobe in each microphone picks me up and reinforces me into the front section of loudspeakers regardless of where I sit along this back row. And we spoke about conferencing with these microphones. Yeah absolutely so because our room is you know, reasonably big but not super huge we set up our lobes in the middle here so they don't get reinforced into the loudspeakers, but you can see from the graphic here that I'm still being picked up and sent to the far end for conferencing. And again, if I was to talk from here, it would still reinforce me enough in the room at all times so I can be heard from wherever I am. Yeah, the multi-lobe nature of the MXA 910 means we can very easily pick up discrete zones for conferencing and choose the ones that we want to use for voice lift and ones that we don't need to. Perfect. Thank you, Andrew. Cool. So myself and Andrew had a lot of fun um, designing that UCI and making sure we've got all the uh, all the lobes in the right place and the speaker zones in the right place as well. Um, and yeah, like I say, it was a it was a, a nice day to spend in the office when uh, most people were in lockdown working from home. 
So, so how, how noticeable is a voiceless system? Is it really obvious? Is it really subtle? Or Not at all. It's really subtle. It's only um, designed so that it just lifts the speaker's voice enough so it's audible and it's not the, the furthest listener isn't straining to listen to what is being um, shared or the content that's being presented. Gotcha. So if you're, if you're talking to a, a traditional PA system, it's really loud when you talk into the microphone. But with this, it's a, a, a much more subtle effect. Yeah, it is. And in our in the, in the room that we just see, um, if we are taking people through on a demo, what we'll do is we'll often not really tell them what we're going to do, and we'll turn off uh, we'll turn off the voice lift function, and people are looking around the room because there is a noticeable difference. But then we turn it back on and explain to them what's actually happening in the background. Oh, that's cool. Cool, cool. So we've seen all of the products that gives you the best sound in um, AV conferencing experience on campus. There are uh, other products that you can use while you're studying or working from home. Um, these are, you know, like, like I say, work from home or study from home products, USB microphones that plug directly into your, um, they plug directly into your laptop. Um, and they can be used with some motive software as well. So if you are uh, an artist and you're recording anything in particular, um, or recording any sort of um, track or, you know, you, you, you can play around with um, editing on the Motive software. Of course, so just so they're, they're definitely consumer products that work with consumer gear like laptops, PCs and uh, tablets and devices as opposed to the professional stuff we've just shown. Exactly, yeah, but it gives the same professional um, audio quality. So you can have the same quality as the university does. Cool, sounds good. All right, so we are at the end very quickly there very much yeah yeah very quickly um so we've taken you through the technology timeline we've had a look at the evolution of technology through universities and since the year 2000 or around then um we've quickly glossed over hybrid learning and what this is um and we've had a look at the audio system we've also had a look at some cool short solutions that leaves time for some questions yes yeah, it's, it's been a pretty exciting time all the hybrid learning it's just the the ability of anyone in a workplace to just have a video conference call i remember 10 years ago in this office here we had one video conference room and it was a big event to go and do that but now you can use my my tom coleman endpoint from this laptop or my phone and just easily switch between the two it's come on a heck of a long way leaps and bounds definitely Heck of a long way cool cool well i've got a couple of questions here so far so if, if you've got any other questions then do feel free to to pop them in the question box so question one of two at the moment um it's about networking mm -hmm. do i need to lay down a brand new network infrastructure or can institutions use the existing ethernet cabling and switches as long as the uh, as long as the ethernet cabling and switches meets the required standard for networked audio um, there's no reason to go out and ha add and a whole new infrastructure to your campus. Um, you just got to make sure that the uh, cables used are um, Cat 5e and above, um, and you know, with on the on the switches, make sure they're managed switches, gigabit switches, um, and make sure they've got no energy efficiency um, uh, commands set to them. Otherwise, it will close ports when they're inactive. I guess it's almost a bit of a how long is a piece of string question because it depends on how the AVIT department are going to want to run it. Sometimes it's like, well, we'll have a completely se separate, uh, bleh, segregated network for the IT stuff and for the AV kits. So it's, it's down to how they each manage it themselves. Yeah, I mean, every university um, has a different way of managing things. Um, you know, you've got your learning spaces, coordinators, and you've got your IT teams. There's going to be some sort of crossover in there. So, yeah. It, Cool, thanks, man. So the next question is, um, system on, um, mm -hmm. is this a sure product or a software or a client server or where does it come from? So tell me a bit more about system on. So system on, it is a sure product. Um, it is a free sure product. Um, it's a license based bit of software that allows you to uh, monitor and uh, see a, a single pane of glass overview of all your devices. And you can see like battery statuses, you can see um, if there's any missing devices, you know, you can see offline devices, all your online devices. It just gives you um, a, a proactive uh, approach to all of your audio equipment on site rather than the reactive, getting that phone call. And then all of a sudden, an engineer is having to run down to a site and uh, uh, run down to a room and, you know, uh, diagnose an audio issue. 
are got so you can still be able to kind of preemptively uh, figure out what's going on before the problem gets reported to you because it will only get reported to you once there's a, a lecturer and a, a bunch of students in the room that's but right. to know in advance ah <laughs> there's a microphone that's missing yeah. i'm gonna go and look for this now yeah yeah exactly and it sends you text and email alert so that you can stay proactive on that cool 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 we have another question that's come in uh, it's about the p300 and a loudspeaker can you use existing active loudspeakers to connect to the p300 instead of the network speaker so kind of maybe on the output side of p300 what's available how might you hook some stuff up yeah you can still use uh, an analog output for the p300 um, and then obviously go through to your amplifier and then power in all your speakers that you have in situ already gotcha so for the for the shore ecosystem you take one of the uh, eight dante outputs and use that to drive the the poe loudspeakers that's right yeah and it'd be a simple change or so how would you change it to the analog output then um that would be done on the matrix in the p300 um and that will probably be done by your uh, system integrator um but yes it's essentially changing the um the matrix um the matrix inputs and outputs and then uh, yeah you can get your uh, audio pass into on poe um, loudspeakers great cool 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 well that's all the questions we've had come in so i guess we'll give it a few seconds um for a cut any more to, to pop in other than that um yeah it's been a pleasure yeah to work with you all today so i'll just see if any more things come in any more oh, it's like a countdown yeah. thing oh here we go oh. oh there we go um how to how can we find a supply or system integrator uh for, for people in sweden and um, the best way to do that is to reach out reach out to your local representative and then uh, they will put you in touch with um, any sort of integrators distributors um or suppliers Cool, cool. Well, actually help and help work with the European guys. So Benham in Sweden are the people to speak to. But yeah, Benham, Sweden, up in uh, Stockholm are the ones to go for. So we can find that sort out for you. Um, ah, another question. Um, uh, are, are there any resources on the voice lift topic? What resources do we have available to us? We do have some documentation on the voice lift um, system. But if we were to go over to that today, we would need a lot more than uh, half an hour. Um, so uh, the best thing to do is reach out to one of the shore representatives, your local shore representative, and they can um, point you in the direction of some documentation. Cool, okay, because of the white paper and a Paganag calculator on the website. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of mathematics that goes into that. So yeah, bit of Excel sheet fun. I think that, that generally, like the the concept of voice is fairly straightforward. You need to make sure that the loudspeaker over there is far enough away from your microphone here in order to get a decent amount of gain between the two systems. But having the system in a two smaller rooms is going to be feedback central immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So a little <laughs> calculation to go for there. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, first one is, is it only Dante or what, what are the audio network protocols that we have the ability to use? Uh, it's Dante, AES67 and AES... Uh, I think just those first two. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Dante and then the, um, yeah, the, uh, uh, the IS67 one to go for as well. Cool, cool. And can you tell me about Teams certification? in relation to these products which ones are where are we up to yeah so we are team certified on most of the products that we saw on the ecosystem page um the mxa 910 the mxa 710 the mxa 310 um and the imx uh, intellimix p300 as well and the uh, any usb matrix the poe loudspeaker is also team certified cool wonderful well that seems to be the end of the questions thus far after the little flurry we had a couple of minutes ago. So I think we'll probably call it a day there. If there are other questions, then do feel free to fire them in that we can get you a response back as soon as possible. But yeah, thanks for your time today, Chris, and thanks for everyone for listening. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody.